Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and we can get started. But I just want to let you know that I launched a new merch and I'm going to include the link in the description as well. Alrighty. Now, we do have two circles, one with radius 4 and another with radius B, B being less than 4, are inscribed in a right trapezoid with lower base 9 as shown. And we're supposed to find B. Okay, so what are we supposed to do here? Well, we know that the radius B is less than 4, so it's the radius of the green circle, and the radius of the red circle is going to be 4. Okay, so we can go ahead and start here by marking the radius. So this is 4, and this is B. So I can just go ahead and make a connection here. This is B, and then we can just go ahead and connect the centers, obviously, right? That's going to help almost all the time, all right? And that should be B and 4 here. And then we can make another perpendicular this way. You know, that's also going to be a 4. So these are perpendiculars. And this is also perpendicular. So we do get a little square there. So this is 4 and this is 4 as well. Now we're given that the base, the lower base of the trapezoid is 9. So this piece is 5 then. Cool. Let's go ahead and make another connection here from the center to the slanted side of the trapezoid. And this is also good because, as you know, this point is outside the circle and we're drawing two tangents. So this piece is also going to be 5. Nice. And we can do something similar here. We can go ahead and connect here. This is B. And then uh, what else do we have? We can make another perpendicular here. And this is also B. This is B and this is B as well. Beautiful. Now, one thing that we need to find is the height of this trapezoid, right? And how do we find that? Well, we do know the radii. So we can actually go ahead and use this little trapezoid here. We have another trapezoid, right? Okay, cool. And one of the questions that we may ask is, are those trapezoids similar, right? We, we're talking about two right trapezoids here, and you can kind of think about it and let me know in the comment section if you have any ideas. Awesome. So let me go ahead and drop a perpendicular there. Let's see how that goes. Uh, it should go this way. Eh, okay, that's not bad. So what we get from here is this is B, and this is going to be 4 minus B. As you know, we, we have a little uh, right triangle here, which we can use. Pythagorean theorem is kind of indispensable, right? Okay, so what we can write here is basically, uh, we can safely say that the height, oh, by the way, this height, we don't know what it is, so let's call that H. Beautiful. Okay, so this is H, uh, and what I know is this is also H. So I can safely say that H squared plus 4 minus B squared is equal to 4 plus b squared. Beautiful. And you'll probably remember this identity from other uh, puzzles where we have something like x plus y squared minus x minus y squared. We always get 4xy. So we can safely say that h squared is equal to 4 plus b squared minus 4 minus b squared, which can be written as 4 times 4 times b, that's our shortcut, which is 16b. From here, if you square with both sides, h can be written in terms of b as 4 times the square root of b. So this equation is going to be very helpful because what we want to do is we want to solve for b, and it's important to be able to express everything in terms of b, obviously, right? So we were able to express h in terms of b, which means we can actually find the whole, uh, the height of the bigger uh, trapezoid here. Awesome. But we're going to do a couple more things here. Let's go ahead and proceed with those. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is going to involve, okay, uh, drawing some angular bisectors. Beautiful. Okay, one of them is going to look like this. And this is really cool because it's cool. Okay, there, we don't need a reason, right? Okay, so let's call this angle alpha and let's call this alpha. Of course, they're going to be uh, the, they're going to be congruent, obviously. And then uh, let's make another connection here, something similar like that one, right? Okay. And let's call these angles beta. Now, what do you know about alpha and beta? So how are they? Well, actually, that wasn't what I meant. I didn't want alpha to be there. So let me go ahead and erase these, but I want to make sure I have a partial 
eraser and a kind of like a small one. Okay, here we go. So I can kind of fine tune this. I don't want to erase the whole thing. You know, we've done a lot of work there. Okay, cool. So this is actually what I want. I want these to be alpha. Okay, here we go. Now, what do you know about alpha and beta? Well, if you look at the big picture, I mean, seriously, you notice that these angles add up to 180 because they are supplementary, right? But those angles are 2 alpha and 2 beta. Beautiful. So then we get that 2 alpha plus 2 beta is equal to 180, which means what? If you divide both sides by 2, you get alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees, right? Of course, it's in degrees. Beautiful. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, that means they are complementary. And one of the things I can do is, I don't know this length, right? Let's call that length x. Okay, is that length important? Uh, absolutely. And by the way, uh, this piece here is also going to be h because, you know, they're just congruent. Uh, this is 4. Beautiful. Uh, we have the same idea here. Basically, you can draw a, a parallel line, so on and so forth. You get the same thing. Okay, cool. How does that help? Well, the first thing we're going to do is relate alpha and beta in a nice way. And I can do that using trigonometry. Isn't trigonometry awesome? So what is tangent alpha, for example? Tangent alpha can be written as b over x. Beautiful. Let's write that. Tangent alpha is b over x. What about tangent beta? Well, tangent beta can also be written, actually, it's numerical, 4 over 5. Beautiful. Nice. Now, how are these two related? Well, alpha plus beta is 90, so they are complementary angles, which means tangent alpha is equal to tangent 90 minus beta, because you can write alpha as 90 minus beta, and this is equal to cotangent beta, which is equal to 1 over tangent beta. Beautiful. So in other words, the tangents are reciprocals. Okay, cool. So basically, I can write it as b over x equals 5 over 4 then, right? Nice. But how does this help us? Well, b and x are proportional. Is that the right word? Okay, cool. Then I can say that, okay, b equals well, suppose b can be written as 5k, then x can be written as 4k. Nice. So this is our key to the kingdom. We're going to use these values to solve it. But what equation are we going to use? That's the important part, right? The most important question here is we haven't used the Pythagorean theorem on the big one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's make a long, long segment here, which is going to go from this point to this base. Okay. All right. Yeah, that didn't quite work. So let me try one more time. All right. I'm hoping to get a really nice perpendicular here. Okay, cool. I think that's good enough. So now what do we see? What is the big height? Um, well, you can call that big H or K or doesn't really matter about Well, we used K. So let's call that W. How about that? Isn't that cool? W. Okay. The big height is W. So how do you write it? Well, this is 9, and this is b plus x, right? Okay, cool. Now, if I subtract b plus x from 9, then I get this piece. So it's kind of like 9 minus the quantity b plus x. Cool. That's my base. My height is w. I mean my height, not height. Okay, so it's going to look like this then. 9 minus the quantity b plus x squared plus the height, which is w squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that's going to equal x plus h plus 5, right? Okay, that is my equation. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to cut that, okay, and bring it down here, further down, even further down here. Okay, here we go. Nice. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation, right? But I need to plug in something. Okay, well, this is cool because I have now I have now b and x in terms of k, which is nice. So I can just go ahead and proceed with that, right? Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to replace b with 5k and x with 4k. So this is going to be 9k. Beautiful. x is going to be 4k. Oh, what about the h, right? Well, we also found h, remember? It's 4 root b. Beautiful. So h is equal to for root b, but b can be written as 5k, so h can be written as 4 root 5k. Beautiful. So I got everything I need. I can just go ahead and substitute. Nice. So now this gives me 9 minus 9k 
quantity squared plus w squared is actually what I'm trying to find, right? Well, w squared. But what is w squared? Okay, that's another good question. w is equal to b plus h plus 4, right? That's the height. w is equal to b plus h plus 4. Well, I can write b as 5x, I mean 5k. So this is 5k. h can be written as 4 root 5k. So we're good to go. So this is going to be w squared, which can be written as 5k plus 4 root 5k plus 4 quantity squared. And that's going to equal x plus h plus 5 squared from here. And that can be written as 4k plus h, which can be written as 4 root 5k plus 5. Awesome. Now, this equation looks somewhat complicated, doesn't it? But there's one thing that makes it easier to solve, which is difference of two squares. Obviously, right? So we're going to go ahead and put this guy on the right hand side and solve the equation from there. Let's see. We get 9 minus 9k squared is equal to. Now, when you write difference of two squares, obviously, you're basically talking about this 4k plus 5, oops, not 5, 4k plus 4 root 5k plus 5 squared minus 5k plus 4 root 5k. Don't worry, this is going to cancel out plus 4 squared. Nice. Now we have 9 minus 9k squared. And let's go ahead and simplify this. So for, first, we're going to add them. When we add them, we're going to be getting 9k plus we're going to get 8 times root 5k because we're doubling the expression and 5 plus 4 is going to be 9. Nice. Okay. So that's going to be their sum. And then their difference is going to be even nicer because these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with uh, 4k minus 5k, which is negative k, 5 minus 4 is 1, so let's go ahead and write that first, 1 minus k. Cool. Now, there's one thing that's nice about this, is that uh, 9 minus 9k can be factored, and it contains 1 minus k. So that's kind of cool. So what I can do is, I can actually write this as ad1 minus 1 minus k squared is equal to 9k plus 8 root 5k plus 9 times 1 minus k. And actually, instead of writing it that way, again, one more time, equality, I can just go ahead and erase this and then put a little minus sign here and set it equal to zero. Nice. Okay. Now I have 1 minus k in common, so I can pull it out. And that's good because then uh, I'm not going to have a quadratic anymore, I believe, right? But we're going to have some radicals. We'll take care of those. Okay. So now we have uh, 81 times 1 minus k and then minus, this should give us the expression inside the parentheses, 9k plus 8 root 5k plus 9. Beautiful. And this should equal 0. Obviously, from here, we get k equals 1. But k equals 1 is not a valid solution because k equals 1 means b equals 5. But b can't be 5. Why? Because the radius is needs, uh, b needs to be less than 4, in other words, right? b is less than 4. You can see that, right? And it's given. Okay, cool. So k equals 1 is not valid. We're just going to reject it. And we're going to focus on the other piece, which is more fun to solve, right? Okay, let's go ahead and see what that gives us. A to 1 minus A to 1 K minus 9 K minus 8 root 5 K minus 9 is equal to 0. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. A to 1 minus K is 72 minus 90 K. And I can just go ahead and put that guy on the other side because I'm going to square both sides anyways, right? At this point, we're supposed to do that. All right, let's square both sides. But before you square both sides, you might want to take out a common factor. In this case, 9 seems to be, let me see, I think it's 18. Okay, cool. So we can take out an 18. So 18 squared separately. And inside, we're going to have 4 minus 5k, which is good. That's kind of easier to square, right? A lot easier. So we can write it this way. And this guy here is, is going to be 64 times 5k. Beautiful. Now this gives us a quadratic. This is 324. And then from this expression, I should be getting something like 16 minus 40k plus 25k squared. And this should equal 64 times 5k. Now the reason why I didn't multiply those is because uh, I can simplify this. Okay, what can I do? Well, 64 and 324 definitely need to have some common factors. Let's see. 
324 is uh, divisible by 4. And that should be 81 times 4. And this is 16 times 4. Okay, great. So if I divide by 4, from here, I should be getting 81. If I divide by 4, I should be getting 16. Nice. This is better, right? Let's see if there's anything else that I can use to simplify. Uh, the inside the parentheses, I can't really divide by anything. 5 is not a divisor. 16 doesn't divide. Okay, so I think this is it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and distribute this and try to find the k value from here. And then using the k value, we're going to find the b value. Okay, cool. So what I need to do is uh, I need to multiply um, 81 by 16, right? If you multiply 16 by 80, you're going to get 1,280, right? If you just add 16 to it, right? Uh, so it's kind of like this, 80 plus 1 times 16. Uh, it's going to be 1280 plus 16. Make sense? So it's going to be 1296. And that looks like the square of some number. Well, obviously, it's going to be um, 36 squared. Cool. Or 6 to the fourth power. Whatever. So from here, we should be getting something like that. Uh, 81 times 40 is going to give us 3240K. And then 81 times 25 uh, looks like it's going to give us, let's see, 81 uh, times 100 is 81. So it's going to be this number divided by 4, and that should be 2,025. Great. So that's going to be 2,025k squared, and this is equal to 80k. Beautiful. Something should be a common factor, and we should be able to simplify this. But I can just go ahead and, at this point, I can give you the answer as well. But here's what we're going to get. We're going to get 3320k, because we're going to subtract the 80 from this number, right, plus 1,296 is equal to zero. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is calculating the k value. Let me, okay, without further ado, let me go ahead and give you the k value, and then I'll give you the b value. So k from this equation is going to be, and by the way, 2,025 is 45 squared. And this is, so it's kind of like this, 45k squared. And this one is 36 squared, okay? So this is probably perfect square. You can check it out. Shouldn't be too hard to check. Uh, if you go ahead and just multiply, it should check out. But anyways, without further ado, the K value is going to be 332 minus 8 root 82 divided by 4 of 5. As you know, B is equal to 5K. Okay, great. So b is equal to 5k. So what I need to do is then to find the value of b, I need to multiply this by 5. 5 goes into 4 of 5, 81 times. So b is equal to 332 minus 8 root 82 divided by 81. That's the value of b that we are looking for. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.